Hello and thank you for choosing Total Recall. Welcome to our video on cricoid pressure technique. To begin, we will provide a brief overview of cricoid pressure, followed by a demonstration of correct technique and force on our simulation model. So what is cricoid pressure? Cricoid pressure is a skill that is commonly used in anesthesia, usually during a rapid sequence induction. And this is usually to prevent aspiration from potential regurgitation of stomach contents in at-risk patient populations. Cricoid pressure is therefore indicated in situations where a full stomach is a high risk. Examples of this include many of our emergency surgeries such as trauma due to the failure of the patient being NPO prior to the procedure. Other examples include obese patients, pregnancy, and uncontrolled reflux. Contraindications and potential complications are listed here below. In order to provide effective and accurate cricoid pressure, knowing the anatomy is critical. The cricoid cartilage is where cricoid pressure should be administered. As you can see on our human subject, anatomy may be difficult to visualize at times. Understanding what landmarks to palpate for, such as the thyroid cartilage, will help guide the provider to correct placement. Several techniques may be used, as seen here, but this is usually going to be a provider preference on which is selected. Of greater importance is the amount of force that is administered, and this is because we need to effectively occlude the esophagus during induction. Cricoid pressure requires an initial force of 10 newtons or 1 kilogram prior to induction. This is then followed by an increase of force of 30 to 40 newtons or 3 to 4 kilograms during rapid sequence induction. Cricoid pressure should not be released until the airway is secured and the endotracheal tube has been confirmed. Many clinicians state that they use cricoid pressure for the improvement of the glottic view during endotracheal intubation. However, the correct maneuver for this is actually backwards, upwards, rightward pressure, or burp. This also requires a force of about 40 newtons. We're now going to switch gears to our cricoid pressure video to demonstrate correct technique and force on our simulation model. Begin at the chin and slowly palpate until the laryngeal prominence is located. This is the thyroid cartilage. Once located, continue to palpate caudad until the cricothyroid membrane is identified. The cricothyroid membrane will feel like a small divot between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. Just below the cricothyroid membrane is the cricoid cartilage. After identifying the cricoid cartilage, either the two finger or three finger technique may be utilized depending on provider preference. 10 newtons of force, or one kilogram, should then be applied prior to induction of anesthesia. Once induction of anesthesia has commenced, 30 to 40 newtons, or three to four kilograms of force, is applied until the endotracheal tube has been secured and confirmed. So here's a summary of all the key points that we've gone over regarding cricoid pressure throughout the video. Thank you so much for watching and we appreciate any and all feedback and hope you continue to use Total Recall.